Hey, what's up guys? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the most requested video I've ever had. This is going to be how to tune the stepper drivers for, uh, well, the Folger Tech printers, obviously, but uh, any 3D printer that uses the uh, ramps 1.4 and Pololu A and what is it, 9988 or whatever it is, stepper drivers. Um, the process is pretty much the same for any printer that uses those. Thank you for letting me adjust that. Um, so yeah, this is may, this is going to be on the Folger Tech printers that I have, but uh, the process should be the same if your printer uses the same control board and ramps and all that kind of stuff. So, to start off, number one, I'm not responsible if you screw something up. Okay? Okay, good. Um, number two... Um, you don't necessarily need to do this. Um, it's highly recommended, highly recommended, but the printer will still work if you've done it, or if you haven't done it. I mean, um, actually, this is my Prusa. This is the, the sweet return of my Prusa in a video, uh, mainly because it has the easiest access to the board. Um, and I actually have never tuned these stepper drivers, I don't think. And I've had this printer going for like a year and a half, almost two years. It's coming up on two years in a couple months. So, um, yeah, I've never had issues with it. Uh, the motors get a little bit hot, you know, hotter than they should, which is a big thing of tuning the stepper drivers. Um, if you're having skipping problems or uh, the drivers, stepper drivers are getting way, or the steppers themselves are getting way too hot, um, that is, tuning the stepper drivers are going to uh, help you quite a bit. So, yeah, let's begin. First off, you're going to need this ceramic screwdriver. This did come with, uh, at least if you have a more recent uh, kit, I know it came with them. I believe it came with the uh, older ones as well. It's got a ceramic head on it. Um, the reason you use this is so you don't uh, accidentally slip and fry one of the, uh, the driver boards. Um, now, you can get away with using a uh, regular metal um, drill bit, or drill bit, pfft, uh, screwdriver, uh, like a jeweler screwdriver or something like that, but uh, you have to be a little bit careful. Um, it's recommended to use one of these because it's ceramic, it's not conductive, but like I said, I've used um, the regular metal screwdrivers, it's like a small one, and it'll work just fine, you just have to be really careful. So make sure you are being careful. The next thing you're going to need, which you should already know this, is a multimeter uh, that can read millivolts. Um, pretty much every multimeter can. Um, a, a, mult a voltmeter will work as well. Um, a mistake people make doing this though is they'll go and say, oh well this needs to be tuned to, I don't know, 0.3 uh, volts or 300 millivolts. So let's go over and set it to 200 millivolts because that's millivolts, right? No. That means, on this setting, that the max you can read is 200 millivolts. Uh, the settings on here is the max you can read on that setting. So, uh, unless you're tuning your, stepper, your small stepper drivers really low, um, 200 millivolts is going to be too low to read that. So set it to 2 volts if you have a multimeter like that. 2 volts is a good setting. Um, you shouldn't read anything higher than that, and it'll read just fine. I should also mention that uh, my multimeter is stupid and doesn't uh, get rid of the uh, decimal places that um, are not needed on this setting, so the decimal that we are needing for this is going to be this one right here. This is the uh, 2 volt setting, so if you read any readings, ignore these decimal places. Um, I, it used to not do that, but I think I damaged something at some point and now it doesn't know what to do, so that is a decimal point that's going to matter for our testing. So now that you've uh, you got the screwdriver and you got the multimeter set up, uh, first thing to do is going to be for one, this make sure your printer works. Like this should be the step you do after you've printed test prints, and you know you could even print on normal the, just the stock settings um, for a couple weeks, you know, before you start doing this. Make sure your printer actually works. Um, if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and you know like skip this and or don't even do this stuff set up your printer, get it printing, get it printing reliably, then you want to step these, uh, set these um, stepper drivers, because if you go and you haven't even started up the printer yet, and you know, you go to do this and then something works, then you're going to be confused and that's not going to be very good. So, make sure that you've actually, uh, you know, tested the printer and the printer actually works and everything's working right. So, yes, that's what you need to do. Um, main thing you got to look for here is that uh, 
for most of the printers, you're going to have four stepper drivers that you need to tune. The only exception is going to be the um, uh, dual extruder version of the cloner. Um, the cloner from Folger Tech has um, the second extruder driver right here, and the second extruder driver is, uh, you know, obviously you got to tune that too. Um, but if you're just using a Prusa, the Kossel, or the single extruder version of the cloner, um, you should just only have four stepper drivers to tune. Um, in order, this bottom one down here is going to be the X, this middle one right here is going to be the Y, and the top one right here is going to be the Z. Depending on your orientation, depending on the printer, uh, you just want to, you know, orient this to where you see it as I, uh, as I have it here. Um, you know, or just follow along, just use some uh, spatial reasoning. Uh, this one down here is going to be extruder zero, uh, which is going to be the default extruder um, under most cases. So this one right here is extruder zero, and then if you had an extruder um, driver here, or you're using a dual extruder uh, printer, this would be extruder one right here. Um, if you have a board that has the extruder dri or the stepper driver right here, um, that's fine. You don't necessarily have to. You don't have to tune it if you're not using it. Um, but if you are using a dual extruder, um, then that's where it's going to be, and that's where you're going to be tuning that second extruder. So now that I've explained all that, so the next big thing you want to do is know what you need to have these stepper drivers set to. Um, that's going to depend a lot on the design of the printer, um, what motors are on it, um, if you've even upgraded the motors or the steppers, uh, then you know, you're know you going to have to go off of that. But uh, the good rule of thumb is if the Axis uses a small stepper driver, um, pretty much there's only two in any of the kits, there's the small stepper drivers and the larger ones, um, if, you're, if that axis uses the small stepper driver, set it to between 0.2 and 0.3 volts. If the axis uses the larger stepper driver, like on the Prusa here, the Y axis uses the uh, larger stepper, set that to between 0.4 and 0.6 volts. Um, and for example, the uh, Z axis on the Prusa uses two of the smaller stepper drivers, and they're running, or this, I keep saying stepper drivers. The Z-axis on uh, this Prusa uses two of the smaller steppers, so it's running uh, the two steppers off of one driver, so you'll want to uh, set that one to, I think it's 0.3 to 0.4, something like that. Um, those The axis isn't used all that much, so it doesn't need a whole lot of voltage. It just needs enough to lift the thing up and down. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. It's uh, basically between 0.3 and 0.4 or 5 or something like that. Um, it it kind of depends on the printer. So kind of go based off of that. Just look at what motor is used on which axis and uh, determine it based off of that. Um, I tend to put any of the axes that uh, use the small motor by itself, I will set that to 0.3. Um, if I has the larger stepper, I will set that to 0.55 or 0.6. And for the Z-axis, um, I usually set that to uh, 0.5, just so I know it's not going to have any issue driving both motors. Um, you can go lower, but, uh, but you don't have to worry a whole bunch about uh, the motors overheating or anything, because they're just used in short spurts. So um, setting that voltage isn't all that bad, or isn't all that important, really. So, now that you've known that, um, now that you know what you're setting it to, I'll even put uh, a little, there'll be information in the description. Uh, you can click if you need, uh, you know, you need to hear what I just said and where you want to read it in writing. Um, I'll put that information there. So, yeah. The next thing you need to do is, if you have everything wired, you know the printer works, turn on the printer. I have mine already put on. By the way, I should mention, this is the older version of the um, Prusa. The power supply does not have auto shutoff, so the fan's always running. And I have a cooling fan right here that usually blows on the ramps, so it's running too, so it's a little bit noisy, so I apologize for that. But this is the way it is. So the first thing you need to do is know where to probe. Um, you have the red and the black probe um, on your multimeter. Now, if you've, uh, if you've looked at the uh, tuning guide from Folger Tech or from the uh, RepRap forums, uh, there's a ground pin on the stepper driver itself. You can uh, put the black negative or ground um, lead onto. I don't recommend doing that because uh, it's very easy to slip and short something out and damage the boards. So what I recommend doing is the green uh, ramps connector over here that's coming directly from the power supply. 
I recommend just taking your black lead and grounding it right to this one right here. Uh, this furthest right terminal um, should be a negative from the power supply. You can just ground the black lead right onto that with no issue. Um, it's a lot easier um, than trying to figure out which pin on the stepper driver you need to do. And um, it's a lot easier to not slip out or anything like that. Just make sure you're doing it on the black, uh, well not the black wire because you might have done it differently, but make sure it's the lead that comes from this, the negative output on the, um, on the power supply. There should be the negative input to the ramp board. That should be this one right here. If you do that, you shouldn't have any issue at all. So assuming that you have the black lead right there on the, uh, onto the uh, green ramps connector, um, the next thing you want to do is put the red lead, without uh, being all shaky like me, right onto the potentiometer of the uh, uh, stepper driver. It goes right onto the metal potentiometer right there. And not the black probe, that's just the one I was holding. <laughs> The red probe, or the positive probe, depending on uh, whatever you're using, goes right on top of the metal potentiometer on the stepper driver itself. You just probe it right onto there, and with the black wire onto the negative probe, uh, or the negative terminal that I showed you, you should get a reading on your multimeter. So let me zoom out and show you that. So now I have the, uh, the multimeter in frame, so black wire is going to go down where I showed you. See, it's getting a little bit of kind of voltage going back and forth and if I probe the uh, the, the potentiometer see right there I get 0.559 volts usually from the factory the stepper drivers are set to 0.6 uh, volts or 600 millivolts so that's pretty much where it needs to be um, so this is the z-axis so I'm actually going to turn that down ever so slightly so what you want to do is take this ceramic um, screwdriver and basically just the little potentiometer that I showed you stick it in there and just give it like a quarter of a turn or maybe even an eighth of a turn um, let me see if I can zoom in to show you that in high definition yeah so like I said let's take the screwdriver stick it right into the potentiometer see how it's turning same sort of thing so it usually it's right here by default so I'm gonna turn it like an eighth of a turn just to see what it is. So now with the multimeter now with the multimeter back in frame, I'm going to probe it again. So now it's set to 0.48, which is pretty close to the 0.5 that I usually go for. So if you want to fine-tune it even closer you can, but that's good enough for me. Um, another thing I should mention when doing this is that some motors and some drivers are a little bit different they like a little bit more voltage or less so if uh, you tune it down a little bit and it's all of a sudden the stepper driver is skipping a whole bunch or something like that you want to bump up the voltage a little bit the voltages that I've told you about and that I have listed in the description is a good baseline but uh, some steppers and some drivers like a little bit more voltage so as long as the stepper driver or the stepper itself is not overheating and you're not getting any skipping from overheating um, just feel the stepper while it's printing um, if it burns you then uh, it's probably a little too hot and you want to turn down the voltage but um, if you're getting a lot of skipping and the stepper driver is really cold or not really cold, but it's not getting hot, then you want to boom, bump up the voltage a little bit. So, for example, I set it to 0.5 volts. If uh, the Z-axis starts skipping at all on my Prusa, or um, the motors are not responding as well as they should, then I'll bump that up a little bit, but um, that should be a decent voltage for this. So, I've done that one. I'm going to take this and check the Y-axis now. There we go. So that's uh, 0.59, which is 0.6 volts. The y-axis on the Prusa uses a large, uses the uh, the larger stepper, so 0.6 is pretty all right. Um, I probably recommend bumping it down ever so slightly, but that motor doesn't get very hot. Um, you know, what? I'm I'm gonna bump it down just a quarter of a turn, or not even a quarter of a turn, just just like a little bit less than an eighth of a turn. So let me check it now. So I got that there, got that there. So now it's at 0.49. Uh, let me just, just, just ever so slightly. Right there. So that should be close to 0.55, I believe. Yep, 
almost on the dot. I'm a thousandth of a freaking volt off. Uh, so, yeah, like I just showed you, all you gotta do is twist that little, uh, that little potentiometer right there. This black wire's in the way, but, you know, same sort of thing. That potentiometer, all you gotta do is just turn it, um, a little bit. Um, I should also mention that, uh, counterclockwise is turning it down, clockwise is turning it up. So, yeah, it's basically just normal logic stuff. So I've moved it down a little bit. We have the uh, x-axis one right here. So let me zoom in a little bit just to get to there. Yeah, close enough. So let me check the x-axis. The x-axis on this printer uh, uses just the small little motor, so it should be uh, quite a bit lower than uh, what it shows. Hey, look, I did tune this one. So you can see here I have it set to 0 0.222 which is perfectly fine for the x-axis. Um, if you can go between 0.2 and 0.3 volts on these little stepper motors, um, which is what the x-axis uses on this printer, so uh, that's that's perfectly fine of a voltage right there. Um, if, a, if you notice, like I said, you notice it's not getting very hot, but it's skipping, bump it up a little bit, but 0.2 to 0.3 is usually the sweet spot for that. Um, in the Folger Tech tuning guide, um, they recommend 0.35. Uh, you can tune it there and that's fine. Um, but for me it's a little bit hot, um, at least for the motors that I'm using in this one. So last but not least is going to be that extruder. Let's see if I can get it in there without killing anybody. So yep, there we go right there. So that's 0.27, um, which is going to be two, 270 millivolts. Um, that's on the extruder, which um, on the Prusa is the smaller motor or the smaller stepper, so that's perfectly fine. So, like I said, um, if you have yours, should be 0.6 all the way through. Just take your uh, little ceramic screwdriver, turn down that uh, little potentiometer, and, and keep checking the voltage. Just turn it like a quarter of a turn or an eighth of a turn, check the voltage, and keep doing that until you're in the range that you need to be in. Um, pretty much, it's you know. <laughs> Just know which motor is on which axis and tune it based on that. Uh, tune it based on the information I've said or the information in the description. Once you've checked all that and all the voltages are good and you haven't shorted anything out, you should, for one, notice that the steppers are a bit quieter. Um, you'll also notice a lot less skipping, hopefully, and um, just overall better performance. Um, the motor shouldn't heat up as much, anything like that. Let me... Let me turn off that so it's not as noisy. Ha! Oh, you hear that? Anything you hear is probably my computer. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. That's basically all you have to do to tune the uh, stepper drivers. It's really easy as long as you don't short anything out. Um, in the tuning guide, Folger Tech has, uh, they recommend uh, you use, I think it's this pin right here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's a ground pin um, on the stepper driver. It's really difficult to try to keep it on there and get the potentiometer at the same time. So I really don't recommend doing that. Like I said, the black lead can go right to the negative input on the ramps connector and you're not gonna have any issue with that. And of course the red goes right on top of the metal potentiometer right on the driver board itself. If you do that, you follow all these directions, you tune it to the recommended spec that's gonna be listed down below or what I've said, you shouldn't have any issue. Um, a lot of people, I should also mention, don't follow the voltage um, that I've listed. You don't necessarily have to use a multimeter for this. Um, if you notice that your, dry, your uh, steppers are really loud or they're skipping a lot, some people will just go in here blindly and uh, tune down the steppers, uh, you know, just like a quarter of a turn or an eighth of a turn and see how the performance changes. So if all of a sudden the stepper that was making a lot of noise is quieter or it doesn't skip anymore, then there you go. Um, it's recommended to be more accurate with the multimeter, but you can tune by ear, as some people call it, uh, just by uh, tuning, you know, just doing it like a quarter of a turn down or up or whatever and seeing how it affects performance. So if you don't have a multimeter, you can get away doing it that way. Um, but I do recommend using a multimeter and getting an exact number. Like I said, if uh, you tune it down and all of a sudden it's you know still having issues, bump it up a little bit. Um, if it's getting too hot, bump it down, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's basically it. So um, hopefully this helped somebody. Hopefully this helped a number of people because uh, that's the one thing I get a lot of is tuning the stepper drivers. It's pretty, it seems scary when you first have to do it, but it's not that difficult. Um, so. 
that's that's basically it. Hopefully uh, this helped you guys out, and um, yeah, I, I don't have much else to say. <laughs> basically, yeah. Um, Thanks for subscribers, new subscribers, old subscribers, those of you who like these videos, find them helpful, give me a like so other people can see it. Um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I have, I'm at, what, like 440 subscribers or something like that. If I hit 500, I will be doing a secret something <clears throat> giveaway um, of something. Uh, you'll find out at 500 subscribers. So thank you guys for subscribing or liking or enjoying this video. I'm going to stop rambling on, so yeah. Information's in the description. Thank you all for watching, and until the next video, I will see y'all later.